Yu-Gi-Oh! might be one of the worst casual game experiences I have ever seen. Now, I'm coming off vacation, and like pretty much every time I take a break from Yu-Gi-Oh!, it seems like the format has fallen apart, and doing my due diligence, I decided, like a good content creator, I should probably learn a little bit about the format. But it really did get me thinking about one thing that I've always thought about Yu-Gi-Oh!, which is the casual experience for the game is very, very poor. I want to preface this by saying that Yu-Gi-Oh! is the only card game I've ever played, so when I complain about this, that's where I'm coming from. Secondly, I want to clarify what a casual is, because I think Yu-Gi-Oh! players have this idea that to be a casual is to be non-competitive. It's, it's kind of a spectrum from I'm topping YCSs to Blue Eyes is the only deck I'll ever touch. Like that, That's kind of the spectrum that I feel generally Yu-Gi-Oh! players operate from, but I think that's a really misguided way to look at casual players in a game, especially in the digital gaming world. To me, the term casual is about embodying commitment. When you think about someone who's a casual uh, Nirvana fan, you know, you have a guy who really likes the big hits, you know, smells like Teen Spirit, huge fan. But then you think about someone who's a hardcore fan and, you know, they have the entire discography memorized and probably plastered somewhere on a wall. That's the kind of player that I'm talking about when I say that the Yu-Gi-Oh! casual player experience is very poor. And if there's one thing that I think really drives this, it's that Yu-Gi-Oh! is the most knowledge-based competitive game I have ever played. The game has 11,000 cards, as I love to say in every video, and even worse is that each deck kind of prides itself on its unique strategy. You have decks that do different things. A lot of decks even try to break the rules of the game, which, I mean, the rules are already complex enough. Each deck wants to do its own game plan, and each deck tends to try to push the other ones out. I think a lot of people talk about things like keywords and why Yu-Gi-Oh! is so complicated because you gotta read, but I really do think there is something that gets kind of lost in there, which is that there's when keywords exist, there's a lot of transfer that you can apply from one deck to another. And and even then there are keywords in Yu-Gi-Oh!, things like mill, you know, if you know what a Beatrice is, you kinda know what a Beatrice is. Like these are all things that you can use from one deck to another. But decks still do try to pride themselves on their unique strategies, and you can't really intuit them that easily. To really illustrate this point, I'm going to bring up an example here. Dota 2 is probably the most complex game I've ever really gotten into. The characters are extremely complex, there's a billion items, the way the game flows requires a lot of nuance and strategy, and that's why I really like it. I still follow the competitive scene in Dota, even though I probably haven't played a ranked match in three years. But check this out, even though Dota is an extremely complex game, look at how easy it is for me to explain to you. I don't even need you to have played a game of Dota, or a MOBA, or anything. I can tell you everything you need to know about this character, Lion, right now. Lion's Q shoots out a line of spikes. If you get hit by that line, you get stunned. His W turns you into a frog, which is basically a stun, but you can kind of move around. His E will siphon mana, allowing him to sustain his own abilities while draining you of yours. And his ult just shoots a beam that does a bunch of damage. And just like that, I explained to you everything you need to know about Lion. That information will carry you from year 1 of Dota to year 15 of Dota. With all that said, I want you to look me in the eyes and explain to me a Fiendsmith combo. That's really where the problem is. The fact that even me, who understands what milling and graveyard recursion there's no real way for you to explain to me how these combos work without sitting me down and making me watch a one hour primer. And the problem with that is one hour primers are cool, but we're talking about casual players here. These are people that are not investing hundreds of hours of time to learn the game. I think a lot of people get mixed up with this where it's like, if you spend 10 hours every week playing Master Duel, and you spend 10 hours every week watching Farfa memes about Master Duel, you're not a casual player. Like, I'm sorry to say it. It doesn't matter if you've never made it to Diamond. You are very invested in the game. And that's where this kind of disconnect happens. This is where that new player experience sucks. You can't just dip your feet into a game like Yu-Gi-Oh!, learn three decks, and expect to be okay. You really have to sit down and commit a lot of time. And let's be honest here, if you want to play TCG, a lot of money, into getting into the game. 
This is something that all extremely popular games that target casual audiences do extraordinarily well. You know, if you're a white suburban mom and you're playing Candy Crush and you stop playing for a year, you can just pick right up where you left off. Similarly, things like Call of Duty, FIFA, Madden, every year, every three to four months, they're not putting out a new ban list that changes the way that American football is played. In fact, when I really think about it, a lot of the issues with the casual experience in a game of Yu-Gi-Oh! comes from the fact that it is a card game, and card games need to sell product. The fact that new decks have to come in if you're in the TCG every three months and, once again, force you to watch the one-hour primers, or if you're a Master Duel player, a few decks every month, can really hurt a player who probably isn't spending more than five hours per week on the game. Furthermore, there's just this ever-building cycle of things you have to learn if you take an extended break from the game. If you miss six months, we're not talking about a few decks and a few hours worth of primers, we're talking about a 4,000 level college course worth of what the hell does this card do. I think the most unfortunate part is when it really comes down to it, I think that that sort of diversity and the ability for decks to do things completely different from each other is one of the reasons why a game like Yu-Gi-Oh! is so cool and why it's so successful and why the people that actually have gotten into the game swear by it so much. Because in, there's intrigue in using all the tools that the game has offered you to beat your opponents. If you're not part of that in-group who can spit out a branded combo line if you open Alubur and opening, but your uh, branded fusion gets ashed, that's tough, right? It's tough. And it is one of the most oppressive things to try to get into. The way we kind of talk about casuals, we have casuals who are just people that, you know, play Master Duel ladder and climb up to say diamond. And then we have people that, you know, dabble and play a little bit and keep up with the community. And then we have the guys who perk up when they hear blue eyes. These are all casuals. But the thing is, their experiences because of the game's complexity are so different. So, so different. Unfortunately, I don't necessarily think there's a way out because it's very intrinsic to card games to have products that push other products out, to have new and fun toys to play with, and to be constantly learning and reevaluating your strategies. That's about all there is to say, really. It's, this is an extreme rant video, and evidently I have a couple hours worth of primers to catch up on.